Hi, guys. Thanks very much for um, spending your Saturday with me. I appreciate that. Um, can you hear me OK? Perfect. Um, so my name's Kat Farrance, and I'm founder of Movement for Modern Life. And Movement for Modern Life is the UK's online yoga site. And I'm, I suppose I'm a whole lot of other things as well as that. I'm basically somebody who has just found that yoga has really helped me in my life. It has helped me to transform how I feel. And it has also helped me to formulate some daily habits, which are really, really useful. And transforming my happy hour is one of those habits which has really, really helped me in my life. And I thought that I would just share it with you. So um, first of all, the thing about a daily habit is I think that it is just, it's worth its weight in gold. It's so much more important than, say, the trip of a lifetime. I mean, we all spend our times, a lot of us, at a desk dreaming for some other time. We're thinking about some point in the future, we're working out how we can take the trip of a lifetime, how we can get this, that, or the other of a lifetime, when actually the trick of everything really is in formulating a daily practice. And for me, being able to formulate 10 minutes even in my life has created so much more. And the reason why it creates so much more different stuff is because um, you somehow realize that it, you're able to make a conscious decision. You're able to get control of your life. So I'm going to tell you, that, so that's the overall. That's the theme. Now back to the beginning. Who am I, where was I, and why did I need to reframe my happy hour? Well. I, um, I used to be a corporate lawyer for my sins. Um, I must have been very, very bad in a past life. And um, basically, as a lawyer, I was really not suited to the job. And I was probably pretty bad at the job, to be fair. And I would spend my time thinking about holidays. And, you know, I was earning a lot of money, so I could work out what holiday I was going to take. It was going to be, oh, rent a private island in this place and go on an amazing spa. Um, but basically, I wasn't awake. So I'd end up sort of sleepwalking through my days, um, just knocking the days off like I was a sort of prisoner. Um, and I know that that's kind of how lots of us are. We feel quite trapped in the lives that we had. And a happy hour is a very, very tempting proposition for somebody who is a little bit asleep, is a little bit ticking off the days. You're just waiting for your holiday. You're waiting for the weekend. Oh, thank God it's Friday. You're not living, really. Well, that's how I was. Um, and the funny thing is, back then, when I had that life, I had the perfect life that you know, that you sort of read about in magazines. It's meant to be what you want because I had loads of money. I had an amazing boyfriend, husband thing. It was lovely. And, you know, a fancy house in the countryside. And really, it should have been that life was um, just tickety-boo. But I always did yoga, and that was kind of my practice. I've always done that since I was 18. But kind of when I got into the law thing and when I got into the daily grind, it really was a grind. You know, I kind of turned off my head to walk in and you kind of walk around the day like this. Oh, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, got any holidays? Lovely. You know, you're kind of a little bit on autopilot if you're in a job that you're not really awake with. Um, I'm sure all of you have got amazing jobs and it's not like that. But um, that's how it was to me. And then at the end of the day, we'd, um, if it was a good day and it wasn't a long one, we'd have people say, oh, fancy coming to the pub? Yeah, yeah, now we're talking. And that's literally the only time that you'd sort of feel something within you, something come alive, is when um, you're like, yeah, now I can get to talk to people, I can get to be myself, I can get to have a giggle, and you have a drink, you relax, Oh, the world is good. And that's, of course, our culture. That's what we do here. Um, and maybe we do that because we're sort of, I don't know, bored. Maybe we do it because we're scared to confront who we are. 
or maybe we just love a drink. But that's kind of what I did. And then, you know, after happy hour, you then stumble home. And then you're like, oh, shit. Tomorrow's still going to come. Going to have to wake up. And so it goes on again. And then the next day, you wait for happy hour. And then the days where you're at home, I actually found it quite interesting in my happy hours at home. Because I don't know if you have this, but my favorite times now are liminal times. They're transitional times. They're times when you're neither doing one thing nor another. And I think that those little times and reframing those times are the key things that we might be able to do. These are our um, access points. These are our access points into the gold. So I'd stumble home from work, you know, feet up. Oh, what am I going to do now? Oh, yeah, of course. Large glass of white, please. Thank you. And then after you've had a glass of wine, you're like, OK, now I can forget that I have a shit job. Now I can forget that I really don't like my life very much. And I can just, you know, make an easy meal. Nothing too challenging, please, because um, I'm a bit pissed. Um, and then I'll just turn on the telly. I don't care if it's shit, because my brain's numb. So that'll do. Lovely. That's a great way to live. And it, and it actually carried on like that for ages, years. Um, and it was sort of this half asleep trance. Um, and I don't know if that resonates with you, but I sometimes now go into the city and I see people and they're kind of in that trance a little bit. And I just think, hmm, what a shame you haven't woken up. So one key way that I did to wake up was um, I realized I did realize that um, this probably wasn't a good thing. So I was like, right, OK, I've got this 10 minutes when I come home from work. And the thing is, in that 10 minutes when you're home from work, if you have a really fucking stressful job and you really, um, you know, you have a tough time at work, as well as it being shit, it's also stressful. So you come home and you're like, you're buzzing, your head's just full of all those things. And you're like, oh my god, and all the things I didn't do. And you just know that they're sitting on your desk waiting for you the next day. Anyway, so that obviously is another reason why a drink is such a good idea. But then I was like, come on, I actually realized this isn't, this isn't the way. So I was also doing yoga, but of course I didn't equate to doing yoga, which was something I did on the mat for an hour or so a day. I didn't equate that to how I lived my life. Um, I was in my 20s and I wasn't very advanced, put it that way, I don't know. Um, so I basically realized, okay, I have got this 10 minutes, this liminal spot where I'm neither at work, but my head is full of work. My head has still got those ideas, it's still stressed, I'm still buzzing, I've got adrenaline, I'm still feeling guilt. And I'm still feeling like, oh my God, what's going to happen about the stuff on my desk tomorrow? So I was like, OK, I've got all of that in my head. How am I going to get that out of my head? So I started to do handstands. And that was it. That was the answer for me. Because I was young and in my 20s and very, very energetic. And um, that's what young people like to do. So that became my practice. It became my daily practice. I didn't have, um, I didn't have my own website yet. So I didn't have online videos. I didn't think online was a thing back then. You know, we didn't really have computers so much. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't have looked to go home and go to a class at home. So instead, I just went into the spare room, got a wall, and just chucked myself upside down on the wall. And I just repeatedly chucked myself sort of like a fly chucking themselves. Because I was just like, right, this is actually quite good. Because then you suddenly, you, you can feel alive. You know, you can feel that your body's actually doing something. And then you can kind of feel when you're in that moment, because you have to be in that moment when you're flying at a wall and you've got no idea really what you're doing. You kind of realize, oh shit, this is awake. Okay, this is a good start. So, um, God, my, um, my, my partner at the time, he wasn't impressed because he was sat in the next room with a large Pinot Grigio just saying, when are you going to join me? And there I was chucking myself and all he could hear was thud, 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 thud against the wall. So, um, and I just decided, well, that is going to be my daily happy hour. But I only spent 10 minutes chucking myself against the wall. But what it did 
is I sort of came out of that, I came out of the room and I was buzzing. I didn't want to sit down. I didn't want to sit in front of the telly and do all the boring. Big Brother had just started, I think. It was then. I said, so, come on, I'm ready. The evening is mine. Now what? And he sat there with his glass like, oh, relax. I, oh, I'm so relaxed. I'm so buzzingly relaxed. So you see, it was just that idea of reframing that time where your head is one place, your body is in another place, you need them to coincide, and if they don't coincide, you'll just have to numb yourself with drinking. So if you don't do that, it's a really good idea to just move your body in a shape that you wouldn't expect to normally do. I mean, nowadays, I'm now in my mid-40s. I wouldn't chuck myself against the wall quite like that. But now, um, what I did instead, actually, is I created a whole happy hour series. So in my job, which is, um, I run online yoga website, I decided that, hell, there must be hundreds, thousands, millions of other people who are really like this and they need that. So just really short, buzzy classes, like, okay, now you can enter the evening. And the thing is, once you make one decision like that, and it's quite a brave decision in this culture, in the culture where if you're working in the city with all the blokes in the suits who are saying, fancy a pint, and you're saying, no, I'm going to chuck myself against the wall, thanks. You know, um, it doesn't make you top for the promotion list. Possibly now it's better. But, you know, um, it wasn't a sort of easy thing to do. But I do realize that actually it changed so much. And it was kind of making that decision, making that very conscious awareness, right, I can change what I do. Like, I don't have to do what the culture says. And nowadays, again, it's a very normal thing to do, but um, it didn't used to be. We used to be a bit more conformist, I think. Um, so that gave me the inspiration and that, you know, I didn't set up my own company until, oh, until 10 years or more after that. But it gave me the first step, the first step that it's possible to reframe your life. And, um, and then I also started to do some quite interesting things in the evenings because obviously I didn't want to just sit in front of telly and waste life. So I was like, oh, what can I do now? And so I started to do all sorts of other stupid, crazy projects. Again, it's before the internet, so that's good. At least I wasn't sort of just wasting my life on Facebook. But it was just, um, you know, reading different stuff, thinking about different stuff. Um, and I think that's a, that's a good key. Now, something... Something that somebody um, once said to me was really interesting. So, because most people, if you say to them, hey, when you get home from your work, why don't you do 10 minutes of yoga? They'd say, oh, I'd love to do yoga, but I'm too busy. You're like, yeah, yeah, busy. So, we all have 24 hours in the day. So, we sleep for eight, we work for eight, we commute for a couple of hours, two hours. That leaves us six hours. Six hours, six hours to play with. Okay, so we've got kids, they're a few hours for sure. But there's, then, you know, there's other stuff, there's other time. There's always, basically what I'm saying is we all have 24 hours. We can all make those hours count for us in the best way possible. Now, um, again, running my own business, I'm a bit of a productivity freak. And you turn, you have to be one if you run your own thing because you can work 24 hours, like that's a complete possibility, but you also have to realize, well, I can't spend three hours doing an email and checking it all off how I used to when I was a lawyer. So what's the happy medium? You have to, you have to find systems. So I'm a real sucker for finding systems that work. And for me, the liminal time yoga is the best time. I know that there's loads of people and it's kind of a tradition to wake up at 5 a.m. and do your practice, but I don't want to do that. A, I'm lazy. I don't, I don't want to get out into the cold and onto my cold little mat. That's too much. But what I will do is I can formulate little periods of times, little times that you wouldn't ever even think was even a time, like the 10 minutes when you get home, when, you know, what do you normally do when you get home? You sort of wander around, oh, I think I'll have a cup of tea now, you know, or whatever it is. That, that time, just get on your mat. It's precious. 
that time is precious. The other time I really like is mid-morning. So if you're in the office or you're working for yourself, there's a kind of mid-morning slump. You're like, oh shit, two hours till lunch slump. Again, 10 minutes, 10 minutes on your mat. It's gonna change the rest of your day. And again, there's another slump at about three o'clock. I personally have a slump at three where I'm like, okay, my brain is dead. That's another great time that you can just use it. You can just use your time to um, do your practice, whatever your practice is. So my practice is yoga, and I've been doing that for, well, since I was 18. I used to do Ashtanga, which was basically what was available in the UK at the time if you wanted to move a lot. Um, and now I do now I do something a lot more gentle. It's a lot more nourishing. It's a lot more supportive. And how I see yoga fitting in into life is it's sort of an emotional support. It's kind of there for you. It reminds you that you can come home, that you don't have to worry about any of it. It's, you're, you're only still you. And yeah, you can plan. You can plan going away on your holiday and you can plan, you know, your next life or your next, but, Actually, what you really are is right here, right now. And that, I think, is one of the, um, that's one of the most beautiful things about, I suppose it's just slowing down. It's self-care. And maybe um, we're at a mindful drinking festival because we realize that self-care is important. Our culture wants us to get shit-faced. And we know that it's not going to make us feel great the next day. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I do still drink, but mindfully, you know? I, I kind of like my days. I like my days to feel buzzy, to feel bright, to feel full. And I want to be inspired every day. I want to be able to roll out my mat every day and do some moves, you know? Um, so that's all it is, really, is it's just being mindful about the little times that you have. And I think that that's why Happy Hour was invented, because they realized it's a nothing time. Dinner's not ready. You're out the office. Your head's one place. Your body's another. What are you going to do with that time? Drink. And that was a great marketing message. But um, it's not really great for us lot, for the people who have to live the life. Um, so those are my thoughts about um, reframing Happy Hour. It hasn't involved any yoga. Um, I'm not really feeling it. Are you? Do you want to do some? We, you want to do some? Amazing, there's always one. <laughs> okay, it's both of you, super. Well, okay, what we could do, what we could do is just, um, I reckon we're all feeling a little bit in our coats. And what I love is you just mentioned the word yoga and everyone starts to shuffle. Mm, feeling a bit uncomfortable, let's get comfortable, because yoga is about finding a comfortable seat. So if you sort of just loosen those tight jackets which are restricting the top of us, and then what I'd say is, um, one of my hands is a bit um, retarded at the moment, I need to have an um, octopus, but if you just place your palms, your hands, palm down, right at the crease of your thigh, and just very slowly, mindfully, start to roll your shoulders. Don't mirror me, do both. <laughs> and roll them one way. And then as you inhale, roll them up, exhale, roll them down. Because when you breathe and move together, that's the magic. So really breathe in. And really breathe out. And really breathe in and out, and then let's go the other way. And then can you see if you can tort your arms so that you're really as um, up and down as possible. And then let's do that, let's just go, um, sorry, let's go up and down. And then try to keep um, your spine straight as if hanging onto the back of your head is a great big um, piece of dental floss that goes to heaven, like right up there. <laughs> so you're just tall, but at the same time as being tall and feeling like you're sort of harnessing your ESP powers, you're also um, grounded. You're also feeling your sit bones as much as you can as well. 
So your body is also sort of between heaven and earth. It's in that liminal stage as well. And you're sort of creating extra vertebra in your spine. And then when you breathe, the breathing bit, I actually think is the key. If you place your hands, like for ladies, it's around where your bra strap is. For men, it's where you'd find your ladies' bra strap. It's right here. Um, and then see, breathing in, if you can, if you can really um, broaden your rib cage. I'm going to just take this down for a minute. And it's really important to learn how to breathe really deeply into your chest here because there are so many people who, when we're stressed out, say, take a deep breath. And you're like, don't say that, I don't even know how. And it stresses us all out. But this is a nice way because we can feel. And if you can feel sort of some intercostal muscles going on here in between your ribs, you can feel space. You're creating space in your body. You're creating space in your ribs. And you're creating space to breathe. And again, that's what I'm doing in life. You know, we're just creating space. And when we breathe deeper, we make better decisions because we're not reactive. We're thinking. We're able to ground. We're more able to do things which are more aligned with us with our true purpose. You know, people are very much often, um, and I was for years as well, you know, often like, I don't know what to do. I don't know which decision. This person says this and this person says that. And often, as humans, we're like flotsam, you know? We just do the decision that, you know, all oh, my friends are doing this, oh, I'll do that. Oh, they're doing that, okay, I'll go off and do that. And that's cool. It's nice to sample different things. I mean, I love a buffet myself. But I also think that it's really important to ground down and to know who you are, because you're unique and we're all so different. And once you sort of can become quiet with yourself and once you can take those deep breaths with yourself and you're able to be a little bit more conscious with how you breathe, you can slow down with how you live and you can start to literally just take one foot in front of the other as if it counts. And we don't have long on this planet, none of us, and we have to make each day count. We don't have a choice. So we have to find those little practices. We have to find those 10 minutes to wake us up. We have to stay awake, otherwise we'll miss the show. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts, experiences, questions, anything that anyone would like to say which may or may not be related to yoga or happy hour or anything at all. Hello. Oh, I feel like a pop star. <laughs> Um, how did you go from lawyer to what you're doing today? What was, what was the trigger for you, or the final trigger? So basically, it wasn't that straightforward as big decisions aren't. Um, it took about 12 years of hating my job and hating myself and being numb and I'd always loved to do yoga, but, you know, I taught as a yoga teacher, but I'm a crap teacher. Well, you've all seen it. It's dental floss to heaven, really. You know, I, I'm not a very good yoga teacher. So I didn't think that that was my path. I didn't know what my path should be. But um, my boss really kindly said to me once, um, you know, you know, Kat, you're just too bloody creative. Can you just do this thing? And I was like, oh, you're right. I am, that's the problem. And actually that was a big wake up call. Then I did this Venn diagram. I wrote a Venn diagram of things that I'm good at, things I like to do, skills that I need for my current job, um, and the skills that I have intrinsically. And I wrote this big diagram, I was in a meeting, um, and I was just like, you know, this clearly isn't right, but I don't know what is. 
And then I realized that my skills are literally the opposite of being a lawyer. I was just bad at my job. And I was just in the wrong one. So I, um, I then just left. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I just left. And I sort of put faith in the universe or stuff like that. And actually, helpfully, I'd been through a divorce and a road traffic accident just before that. So life was a shit show anyway. I had nothing to lose. And I think that's, a, that's the thing in life. When you're really, you know, like I, I'm very privileged. I've had a very privileged upbringing. And when you are very privileged, there's no um, push. You don't have to go and carve yourself out something because you're just comfortable. You're cruising. And I was totally cruising. But then when I lost everything, I wasn't able to cruise. And that was brilliant. That was the best thing that could have happened because it was a slap in the face. I had nothing to lose. And so I just thought, fuck it, I'll leave and I'll see what happens. So then I went on a big sort of vision quest around America to decide you know, what it was going to be. And I came back a few months later with no money and exhausted and it was really hard and then my dog got cancer it's a really bad story isn't it so i had to go to the countryside to look after my dog because i felt so sorry for her and as while i was there i was like shit what am i going to do about my yoga and i started to look online and i was like this is a rubbish it was terrible i thought well why aren't my teachers here if my teachers were here, I'd be able to keep up my practice and it'll be fine. And I literally did it for that because I wanted the best teachers who were... Because, you know, I've been nobbling around London since I was 18, you know? I've known these people for a long time and they're good teachers. And I just thought they should be online, not the idiots who are, you know, good at doing marketing. It should be the real people who know how to teach. So that's what I thought. Is like, it was just for me. I wanted, I wanted it, so it was just a scratch that I was itching. Um, I also did a shit ton of yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep, and it's great. It's so helpful. It gets you um, to that space. You know where I was saying, um, the space where we drop down and we know who we really are. Yoga nidra really, really, really helped me with that. So, um, yeah, that's what I did. And I just did it for me, and then it, all kind of went out of control so so yeah just make a decision and then go with it <laughs> how are we doing for time uh 233 two okay cool so we've got time yeah hi yeah uh, just like to say very inspirational very lovely speech um, I just want, could you speak a little bit about your online yoga and how it actually works? Because I don't think you've touched on that yet. But yeah, thank you. Thanks for asking. I'm terrible at sales. I just sort of spout on and do my thing. So it's called Movement for Modern Life. I didn't want to have yoga in the name because I think yoga can be scary and people can think that it's sort of you know, it's about something and reaching somewhere. And I was just like, well, actually, no, we're all in a little um, rut. Not all of us, a lot of us, and I certainly was, in a rut in our modern life. Like, we're stuck in the patterns that have been handed to us over generations, and they're just not very helpful. Things like seats are just not very helpful to us and our bodies. So that's why I called it Movement for Modern Life, because all of us spend all our time tapping and seated or we're on our feet and we're doing these repetitive patterns that aren't good for our bodies and I thought a lot more interesting thing to do I mean I do like you know oh yeah let's do an hour's yoga class but a lot more interesting thing for me than oh let's do yoga for an hour is how can we get yoga to work for our bodies for the benefits that we are seeking right now so what I wanted it to be is something that's customizable something where you can be like I want something to get ready for bed. So there are classes to get ready for bed. Then it's like Netflix, Netflix for yoga. So you search for the um, benefit. So get ready for bed or, you know, I want something to wake me up. I also have a lot of classes on emotional well-being because for me that's been really important because um, I haven't been stable all my life and yoga has really, really helped. So I have classes to gain confidence and to calm, and then classes to move away from anger, 
feelings, and also to move from heartbreak, because yoga for me was really helpful, because I was divorced, and it was really painful, and yoga was the thing that really helped me. So I thought, well, let's create sections so that other people can feel this. But we also have just like beginner's yoga, because, you know, it really feels nice to just learn how to move and breathe, and that's what beginner's yoga is. So I guess what we are is we are with the top teachers, and that's the main, most important thing to me, is that the people who teach on Movement for Modern Life are people who have a life's experience, no matter how long their life is, so we also have a teen yoga person, but their life's experience of yoga, of living yogic values, which is something like being honest with integrity, living um, a, a path where you're sort of looking for the goodness in things. Um, I hope for it to be a place where people will feel that it's down to earth, that it's accessible, that these are practices where we can just do it for 10 minutes, we can just breathe consciously for 10 minutes, and we'll start to feel that things are more possible in life. So that's what it is. Oh, and we also have loads of challenges and courses, and, um, you know, we have challenges for all sorts of... Um, all sorts of stuff like mindfulness and journey into joy, embrace your essence, things like that. Um, big, and also handstand challenges. So, you know, we get the physical stuff as well for the people who like that. But um, for me, yoga isn't fitness. It's never been about fitness. I think if you've got to get fit, that's amazing. You know, take your cardio out on the hill. That's perfect. And then come to your mat when you're, when you're ready to. Um, because I think that yoga, if it's done very fast by people who don't necessarily know what they're doing, can be a bit dangerous. So um, I like to just see it as something to calm, to nourish, to support. And I hopefully that's the site and that's the community that I've created. Um, we've been around now for nearly six years. We've had shit tons of press. It's been amazing. And um, we're self-funded. We're, you know, it's owned by me. I'm a control freak, so everything is just done by me <laughs> and, um, and my team of people. But um, it's a pretty neat community, so I hope you guys are going to join it. it. You've got a little discount card. It's movementformodernlife.com. Um, and there's a free 14-day trial and all that stuff, too. Any other questions which are less salesy? Oh, it's cool. Hi, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm moving abroad, so I'm very interested to find like online yoga. However, I've got a problem with osteoporosis in my hands. So how, how do I go about finding classes that don't have too many downward dogs? Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about it. It's a pain in the ass. Um, we've got a no wrists section because it's common. There's lots of people with um, carpal tunnel issues, um, things like that. So yeah, there's a no wrists section. Take it easy, for sure. Um, but yoga is also very good when you're not in a critical way. It's good to build bones, get ourselves strong, physically as well as mentally. <laughs> Anyone? Oh. You guys have been a delight. It's been so fun. I love to talk about the things that I love to do. Um, so thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate that. And um, come talk to me afterwards um, or heckle me. All right. Thanks a lot.